When people come here to visit, I want them to be able to learn about the history of symbols and symbol making. The process has evolved in, in a lot of ways, but in some ways it's still the very same process that it was back in 1623. For instance, the mixing of the metals is exactly the same. It's 80% copper, 20% tin, a little bit of silver here and there, but actually that's how the whole process starts, the mixing of the metals, and the secret is in how we mix those metals and what we do in that room where you see the door that says absolutely no admittance. There are only a few people that are allowed to be in that room to understand and execute the special process. My father had been planning this for a long time, which is really funny because he usually doesn't keep secrets. And just one day he asked Debbie and, and me to accompany him to the melt room. He opened the door and he brought us in and he explained exactly what was happening in there. This was very powerful. It really tied us into the whole family history. We became the first women who had an understanding of the secret alloy. Yeah, it was, it was exciting, but at the same time it was a bit of a burden, you think. Now I know, I have to keep this secret. So when the metal is poured into molds, and we pour it different weights, we'll have a range of castings that can be very small. Two pound castings all the way up to 22, 24 pound castings and obviously the smaller castings are used for the splash symbols you know an 8 inch 6 inch 10 inch splash all the way up to 24 inch ride symbols for the larger castings we still heat the castings the same way we still roll them through the rolling mills the same way but we've taken a lot of the physical labor out of it we now have what we call an automated material handler it goes into the oven, places the castings in, and now the castings rotate around the furnace. And that's been an improvement because now every casting that goes through the rotary is heated at the same temperature consistently. In the old box ovens, the castings in the back heated for a longer time period at a higher temperature. When you open the oven, the castings in the front part would cool off. And that would lead to a lot of breaking and inconsistency when they were rolled. The melt room, the rolling, the metal is always worked when it's hot. And it's very brittle at that point, so you have to be very careful with it. By turning the blank 90 degrees with every pass through the rollers, we develop a cross-grain structure, and that enhances the sound and durability of the finished symbol. After the symbol has been cupped and quenched, the center hole is punched into it, and then it's mounted on what we call a circle shear that makes the symbol then a perfect circle. And all that scrap is reused, remelted. Then you start doing the cold work. And that's where you have the hammering, the shaping, the lathing. Well, the press is when the symbol really starts to take its shape. And of course we have different dies for all different size symbols. Hammering not only work hardens the symbol, but our numerous proprietary hammer technologies produce sonics that could not be possible otherwise. The hammering options and patterns we've developed are infinite. And all of those processes take a long time to learn. And then the hammering affects the shape of the symbol. And that's very important to the tone and to the sound. We have so many different hammering techniques and hammering technology that nobody else has. And then you move on to the lathing. We do hand lathing as well as automatic lathing. And then we do combinations of both. The lathing can also help contour the symbol. It takes weight off, which affects the sound. Some symbols are lathed to a greater degree than other symbols. Some are lathed on both sides, some not lathed on the bottom. It's really a very delicate process, and I think people don't realize how long it takes to become a very good lather. And then only the more experienced lathers get to do the symbols like the K-Constantinopoles. I think Zildjian is the only symbol manufacturer that has the creativity and the experience in sort of melding the old craftsmanship with the new modern technology. And that's why we're the most innovative. And I think our products, our symbols speak for that. Our instruments are very unique. Next comes the edging. The symbol's very sharp at this point. So we place the symbol on what we call the edger. This machine deburs the edge of the symbol, making it smooth. Some of our symbols are buffed, not all of the symbols are buffed, but the buffing adds to the visual effect. The A Custom line is always buffed, and it gives it that high, beautiful luster. Next comes printing. We make quality instruments, and the name must reflect the same. We say it's a nice kiss 
on the symbol. Then the printed symbol goes through a heating tunnel to dry the ink. And after that, the trademark is put on by a laser etching. During the laser etching process, we include a specific serial number. Because of the unique serial number, you can identify your symbol from someone else's. It also allows us to track the manufacturing of the symbol. Another Zildjian innovation. I think everybody's heard that Zildjian symbols are always tested before they go into the vault. But I think what people don't realize is throughout the process, we're always bringing the symbols into the tester for quality checks to make sure at different stages of the process, is the shape of the symbol right? Is the thickness right? Are the hammer marks the right ones? So there are various stages of testing, but ultimately the product, before it goes in to be printed, goes through a very formal testing period. Someone listens to every symbol we make before we put the Zildjian name on it and approve it. We have our legendary tester, Leon Chiapini, who's been with us for over 40 years. He is responsible now for training all the new testers. So we have testers on every shift. And we train our testers not only for sound now, but for visual effects and for shape and weight. We're not all about the drum set. We do marching, we do orchestral. In fact, we lead in those areas. And we really wanted to have a place where orchestral players could come. You need to make it easy for people to come in and pair cymbals. Our commitment is evidenced by our new Wanger sound booth. It recreates the acoustics of virtually any venue, from concert halls to outdoor arenas. We continually reinvest in the company to keep our edge. In 1995, we became the first and only percussion company to obtain ISO quality certification. Currently, we're in the midst of an $11.7 million capital plan. This speaks to our commitment to world-class quality. We really are all about quality. We have over 250,000 symbols in our vault. Certain products need more time than others. So we do have areas like the vintage symbols that have to stay in the vault longer before we release them for sale. They just need a longer time period. And it's also true that symbols over time from playing will sound better.